Hello, Nation. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Jeremy Pettis. And today we're going to talk about LADA. Not like a melody, LADA, LADA, LADA. We're talking about latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. Basically, when you get type 1 diabetes later in life. And it, it, it's quite, it presents much differently. And I would say this, if there's any caregivers watching, it's the most missed diagnosis in diabetes. And I know many of you who had LADA, when you were diagnosed, you were frustrated because they just said, ah, oh, you're a type 2. And uh, it took years before you got the correct diagnosis. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we do these TCOID conferences around the world, and this is one of the, the most common thing that comes up. People come up and say, I got diabetes, type 1 diabetes when I was 40. Some people have LADA. What do I have? You know, it's really just type 1 diabetes as an adult. And we give it this fancy name, LADA, because it is a little bit different. But some of the important differences are this. So I got it when I was 15. Steve got it when he was 15. We were kind of doing our normal thing. It comes on like a ton of bricks. You get really sick. You go into DKA. And it's pretty hard to miss that diagnosis. Yeah, you get ICU normally. Yeah. You're a young kid. You get diabetes. You see a pediatrician who's very used to seeing this you know, presentation, diagnoses you with type 1 diabetes, and kind of you're on your way. When you get it when you're 30, 40, 50, it can kind of smolder along. So your blood sugars get elevated, but you're not super sick. And then you go to see an adult physician, not a pediatrician who's used to seeing type 1, and they probably diagnose you as type 2 diabetes, maybe start you on metformin or some medications yeah. that aren't going to work because you don't have type 2 diabetes. And it can take years for people to get the right diagnosis. You know, it, it's very frustrating uh, for diabetes specialists like ourselves to see this all the time. Adult type 2, kid type 1. And uh, these folks, they don't, they don't look like an individual type 2. Type 2s do have that propensity to have a lot of abdominal obesity. They have high triglycerides, low HDL. They, they have a family history of type 2 diabetes. And you know, you, you see people that come down with LADA, they're, they're 45, they're skinny mini, they don't have any family history, their cholesterol levels are normal, no high blood pressure, and the doctor says, you better go on a diet, because that's all they're used to teaching them. Right. And uh, it's very frustrating. And as Jeremy said, you know, it's the, the loss of the pancreatic beta cells is slower, so you don't crash and burn like we did when we were 15. Yeah, and so to make the diagnosis, you have to go in to see your doctor. And they might check these autoantibodies. GAD antibody is one of them. G-A-D, it's important test. And that's a marker that you have some autoimmunity. It can really help tip the diagnosis that this is actually type 1 and not type 2 diabetes. They can also check something called C-peptide, which is a measure of how much insulin your body makes. And if you have type 1 diabetes, that's going to be really low. So another important point I want to make is that sometimes people with type 2 diabetes it's very common that over time of having type 2, they'll go on insulin, and sometimes they'll say, I converted to type 1 yeah. diabetes. And that's not true. That's just that you've had type 2 diabetes for a while, and you now require insulin, but it's not that you got type 1 diabetes or something like that. Yeah, super important. Yeah. Now, what, what should people with LADA expect? Like, what's the time course? What's the progression? And how will their therapy typically change over time? Because in the beginning, sometimes they may just need one shot of basal insulin and, and sometimes they stay on oral agents for a while. Yeah, so I think that's the good news is that it does smolder and you have more time to kind of work your way into it. Um, you know, the bad news is that, that that can also kind of mess with you, that over time, you know, it's yeah, slowly yeah. your blood sugars start creeping up and you kind of are thinking, what am I doing wrong? And, you know, now I have to add, you know, yeah. mealtime insulin. Yeah. That's just the progression of the disease. It's very different than when you and I got it, we just had to be on insulin and we, we knew the gig from the, from the get-go. You LADAs have this advantage that you're still making insulin. So yeah, you might just get away with a basal shot, but eventually those beta shells get killed and eventually you will have to go on kind of full type one therapy. And it does get more difficult over time to control blood sugars. Yeah, and I think that's important for expectations. And you know, it, it's really nice to have LADA because you got a couple of years to get used to living with type one before you have to go on a, a pump or a multiple daily injection regimen. Well. What kind of prognosis do these folks have? Any different than people with type 1? Well, I mean, it, it all depends. So, you know, if you're a lot and you don't take care of yourself and your A1C goes to 15, of course, you're going to have complications. But I always tend to think of it that, that, that a lot of us do better in general because you've gotten it when you were 35 instead of 5. So that's 30 extra years where you had kind of normal blood sugar control. 
Um, and so you kind of have that runway. And then when you're diagnosed, you still make insulin and you still have better blood sugars. So people, in my experience, tend to be less prone to complications. Yeah, so in closing, is there any research going on to take people who have pretty good beta cell function, their blood sugars are not too bad at all, but they're creeping up slowly to prevent them from progressing? Yeah, so that's a couple different questions. So for people that are at risk for developing type 1 diabetes, there's this program called TrialNet that people can enroll in. You can Google it um, to screen relatives if, if you have type 1 diabetes and you want to know if your brother or sister or kids are at risk. Um, but for people that are newly diagnosed, let's say you're 30 years old and you just got type 1 diabetes, what can I do to preserve the beta cells I have left? There are a lot of different clinical trials going on, mostly immunotherapies, medications to try to stop that. Um, we don't have anything to date, you know, that has been really proven to be effective, but there are some things in the pipeline that, you know, look promising. Yeah, keep an eye on TrialNet. JDRF has a good research site as well. So with that, um, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show, Jeremy. Yeah, no problem. I enjoyed it. See you later. So long, nation.